Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a really quick look at real-time surface smoothing, which is a new feature in iClone 6. Now real-time surface smoothing is actually a form of tessellation, and if you're not familiar with what tessellation is, uh, it's basically just the process, the method of breaking down polygons into finer pieces to create more refined uh, surface appearance, in particular for more rounded and more organic shapes. Uh, so basically what real-time surface smoothing does is it'll add two vertices in between every existing vertices in your current mesh. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. So let's get started first on our most basic of shapes. Let's go into our props and let's go ahead into our 3D blocks and add in a sphere. Uh, so I'm going to just double click this ball here. Now if I zoom in on this ball really closely here, you can see that, uh, yeah, it looks pretty, uh, pretty well rounded, but you can see there's also a few kind of jagged edges along the uh, along the outside there. If you take a really close look you can see it uh, more apparently. It's a lot clearer to uh, to the naked eye there. Uh, now there's one thing we can do to fix that which is real-time surface smoothing. Now to uh, it's really simple to do that. Actually you can just go over here to the modify panel and click real-time smooth. And when, you, when I do that you can see that the surface of this sphere kind of uh, goes a lot more rounded and it's a lot smoother. So like I mentioned before uh, Real-time surface smoothing is really good and accurate for, uh, you know, smooth, uh, rounded surfaces. So I'll just uh, disable that for now. There's actually another way you can do this as well. You can uh, go to your uh, scene tab here. And in your scene tab, under the condition section here, the condition column, you should have an option here for uh, real-time surface smoothing. And currently it's, it's at original, the jagged edge. If I click it, you can see it'll go to the uh, real-time surface smoothing mode. And then the callout says uh, real time smooth right there. So that's basically how you apply it. And there's like a lot of different ways to apply this. Uh, let's actually go into wireframe mode here. Now there's a couple of ways you can go into wireframe mode. You can simply click your condition here. You can click wireframe. Or if your object's selected, you can press Control R to go from wireframe mode to uh, normal shading mode. So that's a really quick uh, and easy hot key to use. Now let's take a look at this when it's in uh, regular uh, sphere mode here. This is uh, without the real time smoothing on. If we click the real time smoothing on, you can see, wow, there all suddenly we have a lot more uh, vertices. Uh, the mesh is a lot higher poly and uh, we can get more detail. So there's one thing in your uh, preferences that goes hand in hand with real time smoothing. And that is, if I press control P and go into my preferences, that is the level of detail. So we're going to go all the way down here to level of detail. And you can see currently we have level of detail set to uh, quality. Uh, as opposed to performance. Now we have three different levels we can go to here. And what this means is if I set this to performance and we close it down, let's take a look at what happens when I zoom out of my sphere here. You can see really quickly the mesh is actually simplifying itself quite a bit. And when I zoom in, it'll gradually get, uh, you know, a uh, higher poly count. And uh, that's basically a way of saving system resources. I mean, when you're not like zoomed in on an object really close like this sphere, you don't really need to see those uh, specific surface details. So uh, when, you're, when we're zooming out here, you can see the mesh will become a lot simpler. And that's okay. Uh, I mean, if you're not going into super a lot of detail, if it looks fine the way it is, then you don't really have to worry about it. But let's go and zoom in really closely one more time. Whoops, that was a little too fast. Uh, let's go to our preferences again here. Control P again and go to level of detail. And we'll set that to high quality. And let's zoom out this time. You can see now that mesh remains uh, fairly highly detailed no matter how far we zoom out. And that's if you want to, uh, if you're not worried about your system performance, if your project is running along just fine without lag, you can just leave this on and it'll uh, make sure the quality is uh, increased. It could be a lot more uh, apparent on, you know, objects that have uh, higher detail, uh, like characters and stuff like that. So let's bring in a character. Uh, I'm going to control R, bring this back to its uh, original mesh here. So talking about spherical objects, let's delete this um, uh, sphere here and let's go to our content. And we have another spherical object. If we go into our avatars uh, and our facial pipeline pack, we have this uh, hunter. And we'll just double click him. And the spherical object is actually his head. And it's a, a nice uh, round bald head here. You can see that uh, the head has a similar structure to the uh, sphere that we just had in our project. Uh, you can see there's maybe a little bit of uh, jagged edges along it here. So let's try uh, real-time smoothing his head and see what happens. Uh, it'll take a little bit of a lo longer time to process cause, since there's a lot more uh, detail in the polygons there. You can see now that, uh, boom, it just kind of smooths everything out. 
his face looks a lot smoother. And if we take that off, you can see the result right there. So pay attention to particularly, you know, to like the ears and the kind of edges of the head there. If I real time smooth those, you can see uh, it looks really nice right there. If we control R and take off the real time smooth, you can see the difference in uh, poly counts, uh, the difference in the mesh that results when I real time smooth and I take that off. So again, real time smoothing in itself doesn't do a whole lot. It just adds kind of that, uh, that extra smoothing to the edge of your characters or your props. Uh, I'm going to go and take uh, one more character in here. I'm going to bring in this uh, cell uh, skeleton uh, here. I'm going to double click on this skeleton. And this skeleton here is actually from one of our uh, developers, uh, Mr. Nectaris. And let's take a look at uh, Mr. Skelly here and uh, see what happens when we real-time smooth him. If we select real-time smooth on him, Again, it'll take a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of time to process that. But you can see the real-time smooth affects his entire body right there, and we can see everything just uh, kind of becoming a little bit smoother. Uh, let's focus in on his helmet here. Now, you can actually apply real-time smoothing to separate objects. Uh, when I have the uh, character selected, the entire character selected, and I select real-time smooth. You can see that applied to every single item on his body. But if we go into the scene view here and we twirl down our uh, named column here, we can see that this character actually consists of a number of different things. So if you wanted to, you know, save some resources and we only wanted to, you know, uh, real time smooth his helmet right here, just to get a bit more of a smoother uh, feel on that helmet, we could do that by just, you know, selecting his helmet and uh, zooming over here a little bit and uh, making sure that we have real time smooth selected on the helmet only. And you can see that in that case, the helmet will become different but everything else will remain the same. And we can control R, the helmet by itself, and you know you can see the difference right there in the mesh. Now, real-time smooth is often better used in conjunction with, uh, with displacement maps. And this is a whole other uh, topic that we're gonna cover in our tutorial, uh, vector versus height displacement maps. Um, but essentially, when you have a more detailed mesh, that's going to allow for more detailed uh, displacement, uh, more detailed modification of your mesh using vector and height displacement maps. So let's take a quick look at what I mean here. Uh, we do have, uh, let's delete Mr. Skelly here for now. We do have a uh, folder in our props and that folder is called tessellation props right here. So we'll click that and uh, actually let's go to tessellation template right here. This is just a folder full of uh, um, template uh, shapes that are used for tessellation. Let's take a look at this displace 001, which is a simple plane. So you can see it looks like your you know simple old floor right there. But if I press Control R, you can see it's uh, fairly detailed. Uh, the mesh is fairly detailed. We have uh, a lot more uh, vertices than a normal plane would. And to compare that, let's just bring in a normal plane right here, and uh, we can go to our three blocks wall and floor, and let's just bring in a floor. So we'll double click the floor there, and again let's hold Alt and Shift to zoom out really quick there. You can see this floor is pretty big, but if I press Control R on the floor you can see it's a very, very basic, uh, very simple uh, mesh. And that's because this is not really intended for use with tessellation. If I did go ahead and uh, real-time smooth this floor, you can see it won't have much of an effect because there's really not even enough geometry in the first place. Uh, like I mentioned, it's only going to add two vertices in between each existing vertice, and that's not going to do much. So what you want to like start off with is if you're using any sort of uh, vector displacement or anything like that, or rather any sort of displacement whatsoever, uh, you want to start off with a more detailed mesh, and that's why you don't want to use, you know, your typical floor. And that's why we provide those uh, tessellation uh, props there for you, or the tessellation templates right there. And like I said, we'll get into more detail on that in our uh, vector versus height displacement tutorial. And I really encourage you to watch that tutorial uh, after this one if you want, uh, you know, more details about what you can do with these maps and what uh, tessellation is, and more details and all this stuff. But that's basically our, our quick explanation on the real-time surface smoothing feature in iClone, uh, just how it uh, you know, combines with the level of detail preference setting, and how you can use it for more organic shapes to kind of just uh, you know, create some, a bit, of, bit more smoothness around uh, certain areas of the, uh, of the model. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, stay smooth.